Good morning. My name is Katinka. I'm the seamstress at the cottage and welcome back. So one of my subscribers said to me recently, what are you using to hold your microphone? I am using a number eight knitting needle. Very good microphone won't. Just, just by the way. So today is Sunday Roundup and in the Sunday Roundup, I show you what I've made this week and I tell you about some of the things that I've been up to. So I finished the dress and I'm wearing it and I love it. It is Simplicity 8910. And I love this pattern. There was a few things that I did have to change, but I'm going to have a video coming up this week where I speak about this dress and tell you more about what I liked and disliked. And I will also show you how I've made it. So just wait around for that one. It's coming soon. One thing I do want to tell you, this dress is so flattering. It's higher in the front and in the back. It's got a piece that goes down and ends in the middle of your back. And it is so flattering. So if you are older and you have a stomach, this dress hides that stomach. This dress is also perfect if you are pear shaped. And I just think it is the perfect dress. I might just make a few more. Next up is, I went shopping. On Saturday, we went to a train fair in one of the towns close by, and it was so amazing. Train show. This is a and it was unbelievable. They were trains this size, that means the people were like this, and then up until about this size, and it was just so awesome to see all these people with all these trains. I chatted to a few of them, and they were just such a nice group of people. It's like you have to be a certain type of person to be into trains, and I've come to the conclusion the people who are into miniature trains are nice people. So we spent the morning there, and after that we went to go and get breakfast at a place close by and we stopped there and i looked up and there was this yarn shop which my friend took me to um, i was looking for cables for my interchangeable charhu needles because my fr one friend's dog chewed up my one cable and so we went to this lady and i forgot her name i cannot believe i didn't write it down because i'm really terrible sometimes at remembering names but at that stage, she gave me her interchangeable cables for the wooden set of the chai needles, which is more, more moldable or bendable. And she didn't even want me to pay for it. And so I thought, this is the shop. And I went back there and she didn't recognize me, but that was not a problem. I just love that little shop. This was one of those cozy little yarn shops where you walk in and you felt like home. And what I also liked is she had really beautiful wool or yarn, but she also... She wasn't a snob. I mean, she had like yarn that had 70% polyester or something like that, and then wool. So it wasn't just the type of yarn shop where you can only find 100% natural fibers or, you know, one of those. And I don't have a problem with them, but sometimes I cannot afford the yarn in those places. So anyway, I really wanted to, to buy something from her, and I found this. It is my, uh, I always get this name wrong. So through the years, I've always listened to knitting podcasts because I find them really relaxing. And everybody speaks about Malabrigo yarn. And I always thought I wanted to see this yarn and she had it. So I was really excited. And this is alpaca silk blend. So it's 70% baby alpaca and 10%, oh, 30% silk. And the silk gives it the shine and the fluff is from the alpaca. And it is so soft. It is literally so soft. Oh, I cannot tell you how soft it is. So if you look at that, 
that is how big a shawl or a scarf will fold up when I knit with this. This. So I'm looking for a scarf or a shawl that I can keep with me, maybe in my pocket, that I can take along for when it's cold. Since I've moved here, I've suddenly developed a real appreciation for scarves and shawls. In South Africa, it's accessory, but you don't always need it. But here, there's a purpose for a shawl. I now understand it. And so I got this there, and she um, was so cute. She allowed me to take a photo with her, so I'll pop that in here. And it was just so much fun. So Woolly Mammoth, it was amazing. And they also have their own yarn that I, it's, I was listening to some of the conversations she had, and it sounds like they are dyeing it themselves. So that was really so much fun. And I walked in, and there was people sitting knitting there, and some other people came in. And it was just so cozy. If I had time, I would have been there every Saturday, and also if it wasn't so far from where we are. And I showed her the one. <laughs> I would show you my, um, the Samantha has, Sam, has paint samples mm -hmm. that she brought in. Um, and I just, I wouldn't be here. Could you add it? Actually, I had to because of the feet are so cute. So I just kind of chose the colors that I liked the best. Grace here, but. Yeah, I just kind of went. So that was the one thing that was really a lot of fun and then the other thing that i did this week is i did a let's call it a notions audit <laughs> so i went through all my patterns and all my fabric and all my notions and all my yarn and i've come to the conclusions i have enough i know i don't know many people who ever say they have enough yarn and whatever but i have enough yarn and i have enough fabric and i have enough patterns if I go and look, so what I did is I looked at my Pinterest board, what I pinned for this year so far, and I've come to the conclusion that all the patterns I have, I can just adapt them a little bit, and or some of them are exactly what I need. I can make my Pinterest board if I sit down and I'd want to do that. Also, there's some pieces of fabric that I do need, but I have enough other things that I can continue with. I do need some pants in my wardrobe. But with my fabric being in South Africa, and some of my fabric being in England, and some of my fabric being here, I don't want to buy doubles. So I'll hold off until I can get to the fabric wherever they are. And then I looked at my notions. I've got enough elastic and enough lace. Lace is something you buy when you have the, pro the project you're busy with. And then buttons and stuff is in the same category. And also for yarn, same story i've got it all over the world so i'm not buying more i bought this because i was looking for something really light that i can knit a shawl with that will fit in my handbag and this will fulfill that purpose i don't have a clue of what pattern this is really lace weight yarn so it's very thin so it's going to take me forever to knit but i don't mind because in the end it will be the perfect project and the perfect piece in my wardrobe <laughs> i can't remember what that word is <laughs> So that's all for me this week. As always, it is so much fun to spend time with you here. And I just wanted to speak about something. That's actually my question also for this week. So I've realized a while ago that sometimes my mind goes into a dark place. I think we all have those dark moments. And I find when I'm stressed or when I'm ready to change, I kind of tend to go more to the negative than the positive. And I, I have to be aware of that because there was a time in my life when I really struggled with extreme depression. And since I've dealt with that, I am not going back there. That was one decision that I decided I would never want to be in that place of darkness again. And I'll make sure that I will do the work to keep out of that <laughs> because that is no fun. And then life is about having fun and life is about living it, not dreaming about it. And as you live it, it needs to be fun so i sat down with this life audit that i did this week and i just realized that i've been quite negative about quite a lot of things so i've made a mental note that i will not go there yes i will acknowledge when things are not perfect or hard but like my one friend used to say don't put camp up don't set your camp there and camp at this place because you will be miserable Acknowledge it and move on. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> my question is do you sometimes have times that you go into that place of darkness i don't think it's wrong i think it's ne necessary but what do you do to get out of there and what is a, a, a skill or a or a mechanism that you've developed that makes you be more appreciative of your environment and your circumstances so for me i've learned to see when things are getting into that place but i've also learned to then look for what is the little things that makes me happy in that moment so for example i would i was sitting and it was thundering not thundering and lightning but it was like cloudy and gloomy and i was feeling cloudy and gloomy uh, because i really disappointed myself this week so, <laughs> so at one stage i got really heated up about stuff everything made me angry and upset and wanting to kick somebody's shins and like i said i've really been working on that through the years and i don't really get there anymore so in this week something happened and i behaved really badly and i was really feeling so bad about it so i was sitting on my at my window looking out and it's cloudy and the clouds are moving and the wind's blowing these dead branches because spring is just in the shrubs at the moment it's not in the trees yet and as i was sitting there i felt myself going into that place and i realized ah this is not good so i immediately started looking for four things that makes me happy and i looked down and i saw my handmade cup that i got from a friend and i thought oh that makes me happy and then i was looking outside and i saw the the bright green leaves from the brushes that's that's got leaves on them already and i thought oh that makes me happy and i looked around in my room and i saw my nice water bottle that i love drinking out of because it's giving me exactly the right amount of water and it lets the water come out at the exact amount that it's just perfect in my mouth and i thought that makes me happy and i looked down and i was wearing my new dress and i thought oh that makes me happy and so immediately i felt better and it was that thankfulness that just took away all the gloom and i thought oh okay i'm thankful again and life was good so give me examples of things that you do when you have those gloomy days and how do you get out of that or do you have a rule my rule is i can have gloomy days but they're not allowed to last longer than 12 hours and i can give myself time to mill you know, go into that place but then i have to pull out of it and move on with life so do you have rules like that do you have coping mechanisms what do you do when life feels overwhelming I'm going to leave you at that and I want to thank you for coming along on these little adventures and for joining me over here. If you're new here, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will go and like and subscribe. And if you are part of this family for a while, please leave a comment. I always love hearing from you. I will see you in the next video. So, goodbye. I forgot to speak about this. So last week I had a Q&A where I answered your questions and gave advice on sewing and everything else for my 2000 subscriber celebration. I was going to speak about a giveaway this week, but just with my life at the moment and not knowing in which country I'm going to be and South Africa postal services being notorious for letting packages go missing, I won't be able to do any giveaway at this stage. But I thought I will do a proper one when I reach 3,000 subscribers. And I just want to thank each of you for joining me and for all your comments and for just being part of my life. It has really been such an amazing journey so far. Thank you. I really appreciate you.